Introducing Kicking Back with the Cooks, presented by Woodhouse. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. Here's head coach John Cook, along with your host, Lauren Cook-West. Welcome back. Another episode, Kicking Back with the Cooks. Happy summer. And we are going to start off today's episode with some major news, which I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. But Coach Cook, congratulations. You're coaching through 2028, brand new contract, and a brand new horse. Really? (laughs) (laughs) Is that all a a dream or is that for real? It's for real. It's in print. This is real. You're not dreaming. I want the unedited full story of how this came full circle and how all of this happened. All I know, from, the be- from the beginning. All I know is I found out uh, how many people read the Wall Street Journal because uh, the <laughs> article was in there yesterday and a, a lot of people texted me that read the article in the Wall Street Journal. So uh, they, you, did, they found it a very interesting piece. They, they knew nothing about volleyball, coaching, sports, the riders, <laughs> but, or horses, but they found the story fascinating and, and ran it. But... Uh, so, you were in the Wall Street Journal, you were at Fox News, I mean, ESPN, every major news source, but some that don't even cover sports or are heavily involved in the sports world, like Wall Street Journal, for example. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's, well, it's a cool story, but uh, where would you like me to start, Lauren? From the beginning. When, when the wheels started turning on, on this idea. So the... Um, <clears throat> when we were looking at horses, uh, Mark Ray, who's uh, Mark Ray Performance Horses, who's... When, when is this? Back this in the spring? This is all the way back in March. Back and, in March, okay. And I actually have been out. This is a, he, were, he trains horses at the Pizza Ranch. So it's, it's a kind of a big all-in-one all encompassing group out there. So... Anyway, I rode a bunch of horses. Your, your brother rode a bunch of horses we were looking at. And then when I went out in late March, Mark Ray brought out 415. And he goes, I want you to ride this horse. And I said, okay. And as soon as I got on him, started riding and roping on him, I'm like, wow, this, this is a really good horse. He goes, I just want you to feel like what a really great horse does and, and how it performs and, you know, how you have to do very little, just let the horse do the work. And, and I was blown away. And so anyway, lo- fast forward, the Pitzer sale, it was going to be, it's a very expensive horse. And anyway, he ended up not selling it in the Pitzer sale. He did this is in called, April. This is in April, April 27th. Okay. And he did what's called a no sale. So I, I have my theories on why he didn't, he no sailed it uh, because they, he got he, the price was high, and and but he decided not to no sale, which the the sellers have a right to do that. And this is a horse he got as a, a one year old, and raised it and trained it, so it's kind of you know one of his babies. And so he's got a lot of horses though. So, but but uh, the 415 is a really good horse, and he just decided that he he wanted to keep it. And and I told him I was very interested in the 415. But it was out of my price range, and um, you know, and he, he's a lot of horse, and he's got a couple quirks that you have to work through with him. But once you get, once it's game time, he's good to go. So we just got to do some visualization and some breathing with him, and he'll be great. But so anyway, uh, when I was driving from Nebraska to Wyoming after our spring match that week, I went out back to the Pitzer so- Ranch. This is in May. This is in May. Rode, okay. rode 415 again. I uh, and and just rode him and appreciated him. And I'm like, man, he's I love this horse. And so anyway, that was it. So when I was, then I went to a couple brandings. So I spent the week out there and then drove up to Wyoming to see you guys. So when I was driving across the middle of Wyoming where there's nothing out there, uh, Troy's texting me about my contract, you know, some of the things in there. And I was just thinking, so I called a couple people because I thought, you know what, I had the stair step thing and all that stuff. It's, I just would really love to get 415. So, 
So I just, I, you know, again, when you're driving, you think, and you're just, you know, my imagination's going wild, and I, I just, I said, hey, what, what do you think if we just get rid of the, all the stair step stuff and, and put in a horse? And Troy loved it. And I said, you're going to make a lot of friends in western Nebraska. <laughs> so the Cowboys love it. And, um, uh, and anyway, we got it worked out. And um, so that's kind of the story. And, and it, it was, um, you know, it's, to me, it's, a, it's also it's a horse that connects me with western Nebraska more. It's a horse that connects me more with Mark Ray and what he does, I think he's an exceptional coach, even though he's training horses and, and developing ropers and different things. He's got two daughters that are great, ropers and rodeo uh, competitors, and, and then Pitzer Ranch. And so now I can have kind of a horse here in Nebraska, and I can go out there and continue to learn and get better and, and, and continue to work with these guys. And Mark Ray is going to kind of help facilitate all this and help manage 415 and take care of him till he goes to Wyoming or, or wherever. Uh, but I can always bring him back to Nebraska. So it's kind of our relationship that we built and kind of what, why this horse would be a great horse to have. And, um, but I'm really buying the team here. It's, it's the Mark Ray team. And, and uh, that's really what I wanted. That, that's really, really important to me. And those guys love it because it's, you know, they're getting a lot of recognition and people are appreciating what they do and, and, and their way of life, and it's, it's awesome. And I cannot tell you, Lauren, how many people I have run into since this all happened that are from Erickson and know somebody from Erickson, Bartlett, Burwell, uh, Ord. It's unreal, the connections out there to people. Like our... One of the guys that's a security guy in Devaney, he's, he taught three years at Bartlett. He was telling me all about it yesterday. He, he uh, in, one, in his classes, was one of the granddaughters of the Brinkman family that owns the Pitzer Ranch. So, I mean, it's just, it's just like nonstop all the time I'm running into people with connections out there. So it's, uh, anyway, there's the story. This is, I feel like, a win-win situation for a lot of different groups. It's for volleyball overall because you brought attention to just, I mean, even though you weren't, you're, it's just a contract renewal and you're adding in a horse. I mean, look at some of the major news outlets that picked up this story and you're bringing attention there. You're bringing attention to the Western part of the state, Pitzer Ranch, Horse World. I mean, you're just, you're connecting all these worlds and you're bringing so much attention to things that people like me, for example, had no idea about before. And, you know, now it's something I'm a little more educated about and know a little more about, and it's it's really cool. I, and I think a lot of people would agree with me in saying that, you know, you're you're helping to shine light on not just volleyball, but now the horse world. Yeah, I really the other reason that was kind of fun to do it was it's kind of a test for Troy. Like Troy, we're, we <laughs> like to think outside the box at Nebraska volleyball. I mean, we we do stadium matches. We we do crazy things in Devaney. We, you know, we've done took the first team to China, just a lot of lot of crazy things, and we try to think outside the box. And to me, this was another way of doing it, and it was kind of a test for Troy. And I, I, I think it's really cool that he, you know, that's what you want in an athletic director and a leader is somebody that is going to say, "Wow, well, that, that's a great idea. Let's see what we can do and how we can make it work." And so I got to give him a lot of credit because it is outside the box. And, and that's why it became kind of big news because how many coaches are doing that kind of negotiations, you know? Um, and so anyway, it was, and I think he's, he, you know, we're having fun with it. And that's, that's the most important thing is we've got to continue to have fun around here and, and push hard and, and, but still have fun and enjoy the process. So Troy passed the test. Troy passed the test. Yeah, that was, he didn't even he didn't even flinch, Lauren. It was like, oh, that's a great idea. Let's do it. I <laughs> love it. Now, then he had to get the lawyers involved. I mean, they got to work through all that stuff. But, yeah. Uh, I ran into the governor. He he just uh, at a Larry the Cable guy's uh, uh, get her done foundation event the other night, and he's now going to buy two horses. He said. So <laughs> I'm telling you, it is it is a happening right now, and people are want to be, they're in love with the, the old Western lifestyle, they're in love with 
horses and, like I said, chores and getting dirty and being out in the nature and uh, just, you know, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm seeing this explosion of that world uh, and, you know, I'm a part of it. Is this all in thanks to Yellowstone, the show Yellowstone? I think, I think Yellowstone deserves a lot of credit. I think Taylor Sheridan, who produced Yellowstone and bought the Four Sixes Ranch and uh, has just, you know, is coming out with uh, um, the 1923 series. I mean, it's all about how America was settled and the West was settled. And you see all these shows now. And now, now uh, Kevin Costner made a movie, Horizon, which is about settling the West. And, the West was settled on horses, and uh, and I think people are are just craving. We're, we want to get away from the electronics and the digital world and all that stuff. It's kind of just let's just go back to the old days, you know, and 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 revisit that. And this is one way to kind of live in that world. Welcome to Kicking Back with the Cooks, where we talk about how the West was settled. <laughs> Well, the, yeah, the other thing is I went on a couple of brandings at some ranches out in, in the Sand Hills. Yeah. I mean, it's How were those? It's beautiful out there. It's awesome. And it's just, Lauren, I'll just give you one example. So the first branding I went to was at this ranch, and the, the mom, uh, grandma mom, is she is actually uh, is a volleyball coach. I didn't know it. So after we do the branding, she was making food for everybody, and everybody came back. There's probably 20, 25 people. We all sat around in a circle, grabbed the lawn chairs, sat outside, and she had this, you know, big buffet, and that's what they do. You work all day, and then they make this great spread. And so anyway, um, we sat there and talked for three hours. I didn't, know, I, I didn't know any of these people. And for three hours we talked, no cell phones. It was all just telling stories and talking and, and relating. And like, when does that ever happen anymore? You know, when somebody's not on yeah. their phone or checking phones. Now, part of the problem is well, there's the self-service out there is not very good. But uh, the fact that people sat down for three hours, and, and all these guys are cattle guys, ranchers, and um, I don't know, it was just really, really cool. You don't even talk to me for three minutes without looking at your phone. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll fix that. <laughs> I, I want to go back to out of the box ideas and Troy. Have you thrown any other ideas at him for this upcoming season or a couple years in the future, or you're just starting one big idea at a time? Uh, that, that, that was a pretty big idea. We we haven't really talked much about the season. Um, you know, we're we're pretty squared away. I, I think we're doing. Um, uh, we're going to have a DJ this year in Devaney. I think no. that's that's what's happening. So, no. Uh, <laughs> Why? It'll, it'll, it'll hype it up. You, you watch. No, it won't. No, yeah. it won't. Look, go to, think about when, I think it's Indiana. JB and I always talk about this. I think when, it's when we go to India, or maybe it's Maryland, or maybe it's both. It's Indiana. But Indiana does. I think Maryland has a DJ as well, yeah. and maybe even Northwestern. And it is, it's loud, it's excessive, it's music that you just... Well, we'll try it. We'll try it out. I don't see know. how it goes. But I, I think we're going to try to do some things like that. Um, Here's what you should do: send out a survey to Husker volleyball fans. Well, say, would you like a DJ? Yes or no? You do, and your, I, you do your Twitter thing to say yes or no, <laughs> DJ. Yes or no? I'll bet you a crispy that the majority says no. Okay, let's do it. You do it. You want to make a, a bet? Send a shake sample. on it. I shake. Yeah, I got a. I got a meeting with uh, marketing. We're trying to schedule it right now. So. Are you allowed to b place a bet with me? Is this legal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Father-daughter bet. That yeah, works. Yeah. No. Okay. I guarantee you the majority of the people will say no. Okay. Well, we'll see. let's see. Let's see. Well, speaking of Nebraska volleyball and everything going on behind the scenes, can you give us any quick team updates, coaching updates? I know you're recruiting. You have camps. You have players going into the USA gym. But, Post or former players getting married. Give us all the the team updates. Oh my gosh, that that is a whole show right there. So, <laughs> okay, Nicklin just got married. Kenzie, congratulations! Got, Wait, congratulations, congratulations, yeah. Nicklin, congratulations, Kenzie. Kenzie got married a couple of weeks before that. Maddie gets married at the end of June. Destination wedding in Mexico, I think. Ooh. Uh, I, I was not invited. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, okay, Kelly gets married next January. So that's the wedding update that I think, can think of off the top of my head right now. Um, uh, let's see. Everybody's here. So Layla and Taylor are here. So we finally had, you know, you see everybody together. It's like, okay, here's our team. So that's kind of really kind of cool. Um, I, ha I have to tell you a, story, a quick story. Madden always likes to look at the roster yeah. on a computer. And she, she knows pretty much everyone by now. She'll go through and she'll say, you know, that's Merritt, that's Lexi, that's Papa. That's, she even knows Jolene, the trainer. And uh, so she goes through and, and all of a sudden she gets to Taylor. She goes, who's that? <laughs> and then she gets to Layla, who's that? I don't, I don't know them. They're not, they're not on the team. Yeah. So then we had to explain to her, you know, they're new. They, they transferred in. And so she goes, oh, I like them now. <laughs> and then her uncle, my brother, Taylor, your son, his, his name's Taylor. And she, um, so then she was talking about how Taylor Landfair and her, her uncle T.T. Taylor had, have the same name. And she was really intrigued by that. So it's just funny. Oh, yeah. Toddler's, toddler's perspective. Yeah, cute. But... Um... <laughs> They're all here. Um, three of them are leaving next Tuesday to go to USA team, older USA team. That's Merritt, Lexi, and Taylor. Uh, so they'll train and try to make that team. And if they make that team, I think they go to Dominican Republic to play. And then three days after that, uh, let's see, um, Laney, Olivia, Andy and Bergen all leave to go train in California, and if they make that team, they will go to Toronto, Canada and play in a, in a tournament. So we'll have one group in one place, one group in another place, and one group here. So we're going to try to have fun with the group that's here, you know, kind of make it special. We're going to work really hard, and, and, uh, but we'll, we'll do some fun things to kind of team, team bond and build with those guys. Uh, and. Uh, so anyway, I, that's, that's kind of how our summer is. We start camps tomorrow, so the camps go here for the next eight or nine days. Then we go recruit, and then we come back, and we have our dream team camp and our team camps in July. And then, the, you know, the other big news that was just announced, came out today, was uh, we'll, we'll open the college volleyball season against Kentucky in Louisville three days before the regular season starts. So we'll do what's called zero week. They call it in football, um, like our football team, I think it was last year played zero week. They played zero week before. So we'll actually start off college volleyball. They got a, an exemption to do that. We used to, we used to do that back when you played. Um, they had, it was called the AVCA Showcase. And it would oh, always yeah. be a week early to just kind of promote college volleyball. So they're trying to bring that back. This is the first attempt of it. And it'll be um, us against Kentucky and then Louisville will play Wisconsin and uh, at, in Louisville. And uh, Lincoln Arnell or Jacob Padilla uh, had a great line I saw. It, we should call it the John Cook Invitational because Wisconsin was, <laughs> you know, my former old school. And then, of course, Danny and Craig Skinner are at Louisville and Kentucky. So it'll be kind of a, I thought that was kind of interesting. I never thought about it until I yeah. saw that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not the John Cook Invitational, but it's, it's kind of cool for me to, you know, those four programs. Uh, there, there'll be a little more connection there with that. So, so we'll, we... we'll, we'll really have to get it done this summer because we'll have less days of train. We start school that week. So it'll be, um, we'll have to really be prepared and do a good job. Were you pushing for that earlier start date or for a match like is that a positive to you or is that a negative because you're starting school that week you have to start earlier that means your season's longer um no it's uh i don't i don't think it's a big deal but they actually moved up the start date this year five days from when we can start uh the season because um you know football plays after us a week after us and starts a couple weeks before us so it just hasn't made sense. So they actually granted volleyball five days more time to prepare because that way now you don't have to feel like you have to do two a days every day. You can space it out a little more. You got more time to prepare. Um, so I'm excited about that because usually it just feels like, and again, it all depends on if you start school early, 
you're at a disadvantage. Stanford and those guys, they don't start school until the end of September, so they don't care. I mean, they can travel all over, do go wherever they want. Um, they have no school, but there's some schools that start in the middle of August, so they're, they get a couple days and then they're in school. And once you start school, it's harder to train and watch video and take more time. So I'm glad they started earlier. I, I really like that. Um, so I think it'll help us prepare for playing three days early. So they pushed up your two-a-day start time, and then they pushed back the national championship dates. I don't know if you looked, but if you make it to the Final Four, you're playing – if you make it to the finals, you're playing on December 22nd, which is a Sunday. And then – I mean, that's right around the holidays. It's – normally I feel like it's a week or two before that, but it's, it's late this year. Well, Lauren, you know, I, I've tried to move volleyball to the spring. I know, but. I know. That's a whole nother episode that we could talk about that. I, well, I, th I think where, we're gonna, where it's going to go is uh, I think we're going to continue to see volleyball start earlier, and at some point we're going to be ending earlier to stay away from that Christmas. Try to get early, uh, be, you know, um, early December to stay away from NFL. I mean, there's everything going on in December and then Christmas. So, right. uh, and that's, it's a hard week to travel. I mean, that's, you're right. That's really cramming it close to Christmas. You know, remember when the final four, there's also a convention going on, coaches come in. So that late date could maybe impact that. We, you know, I love games. So <laughs> we're going to play a fun little game and you love Zach Bryan. So it has yeah. to do with Zach Bryan. Okay. So uh, you claim that he's your favorite singer right now. Right now, he's, he's, <laughs> yeah. We're going to see, we're going to put you in the hot seat and see how well you know his songs. Oh, my gosh. So here, here's what we're going to do. I, I actually got this idea. Uh, I don't know if you know who Dave Portnoy is. He runs or owns Barstool Sports. He was on um, with Alex Cooper from Call Her Daddy, who's, she's up there with Joe Rogan and top podcasts. And she was quizzing Dave about Taylor Swift. And so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to say a lyric in one of the – we're going to go through five different songs. So I'm going to say sure. one lyric of the song, and then you're going to have to say the lyric that comes next. Okay, so if I get okay. one of them, you owe me dinner. And also, doesn't Zach Bryan's girlfriend <laughs> work for Barstool Sports? She, so she does a podcast with Dave um, and another gentleman. I think it's called okay. like the BFFs podcast. It's pretty funny. So that should be plus one right there for me. That, that I, is. That that's it. That. I'm impressed you knew that. Yeah. Do you know his girlfriend's name? No. Okay. I, I think Bree, Brianna. All right. Well, anyways, are you ready to, do you want to start? Let's are you ready it. to go? I can tell you right now, this, this, <laughs> this, we'll edit this out probably. <laughs> no, Nick, please leave this in. Okay, go. Let's make it fast because it's okay. going to be hard. Do I remind you of your daddy in my 88 Ford? Um... Uh, do I remind you of your daddy in your 88 Ford? Uh, I remember everything. Oh my gosh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> that's actually the song, but the next line is Labrador oh. hanging out the passenger door. Oh, I'm not going to know that. Okay, okay, but that's good. You can, you can give me a song name. That's close all enough. All Night Revival. That's the only line I know. We're, all Night we're Revival. Getting, it's an All we're Night getting, Revival. <laughs> we're getting to that one. Okay. But I miss you in the mornings when I see the sun. Oh, that's something in orange. Yep. I, yeah, I, yes, but I have no some... idea, Lauren. I'm, I'm not. I, <laughs> I, like, I like music, but I'm, that's why I, if I was good, I would be playing. I'd be in a band. Something in the orange tells me we're not done. Yeah, okay. So, so you got part of that because okay. you said something in the orange. Don't stop going, going south. No idea. Because they'll let you play your music real dang loud. Yeah. I, the, the other okay, line, only, I can just, we'll just go ahead. The only other line I know is to say, hey, driver, drive me on a windy road. <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> hey, driver. Or it's called driver. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here, I have two more for you. That's it's, it's our favorite song right now in the office. Hey, driver by, or driver by Zach Bryan. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to listen to it after. I don't know if I've heard that one. Yeah, it's a, he actually sings it with another guy. I don't remember who the guy is. Um, now I need to look this up, because yeah. I don't think that's the name of the song. Yeah. Driver by Zach Bryan? Yeah, yeah. well, let's see. Lauren? Oh, Hey Driver, featuring hey. The War and the Entreaty. It's from his, one of his newer albums. Right. 
Yeah. Okay. And he's got a guy. Driver. He's got a guy that right. sings it with him. Yeah, the war and the treaty. Yeah. All right, two more songs. Okay. Baptize me in a bottle of beam and put Johnny on the vinyl. Okay. Come on. That's from Revival. Baptize me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just. But what com come I on, just, what comes next? I don't know. I don't remember. No, you you were giving uh, we're Dylan Real a hard time. Night yeah. Revival. Yeah. <laughs> Told you I'd get one. You got one. Yes. Okay. Last one. And plenty of nights under pink skies. Is that from Don? No, it's his new Pink Skies, his oh, new song. Oh, I, oh okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that one well enough. You it's, taught it's him a, to It's not on my playlist. How, well, it's a great song. I know, I know. I just haven't, it's not on my Zach Bryan playlist that I have on Spotify. All right, I owe you dinner because okay. you got one right. Where do you want to go? Uh, let me think about it. Okay. <laughs> I'll take you to dinner. Amalfi uh, Coast, Amalfi Coast. <laughs> That's, that's another poll I need to put out there. Yeah. Please take me to Italy. You just got a new contract. You can afford it. Take, oh. take us on a family vacation. Fred, Fred, our basketball coach, was just there. You saw the pictures. Yeah. Fred, and Fred told you you got to go. I know. I know. And I, I've been there once. I want to go back. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, well, let's, uh, here's where I want to go to dinner. I want to go to the wagon wheel out in Erickson, Nebraska. <laughs> It'll be a good experience for you. The wagon wheel? Yeah, I think they call it the wagon wheel, the spur wheel, or spar, I don't know, something, uh, something like that. Jeez. It's where everybody right. goes. It's the only place out there. There's only one restaurant? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there a stoplight? No. No stoplight. Oh. How many people live there? Not many. Where is this where the hat-making couple There's more, couple is? more cows than people. Uh, no, the, the hat making, the bar nuns, uh, that's by Thedford. So, okay, okay, different, different place. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cows, I'll let this be your confession. Uh, you should tell us the story of what happened the other night, roping. In the, I think it's called in the shoot. In the shoot, right. So you, there, was a, there was a big problem happening in the shoot, and yeah. we, Madden and I got to witness it. Yeah, so... New steers, running them through, and two got kind of tangled up, and one laid on the other one, and they, wouldn't, they couldn't get up. So Madden got to see it. We tried all kinds of things. We tried pulling them out with the horses, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually we, we had to take the boards off to just let them get out sideways as opposed to going through the chute. So it was, that was cowboy. That's cowboy. You just got to figure it out. Try this, try that, go to the next thing. And figured it out. And ended up taking the boards off, got a crowbar, and took the boards off and got them out, and everybody was happy. And, was and, and Lauren, I mean, uh, Madden was really interested in watching all this. <laughs> Here, here's her two concerns. Number one, the, I don't know what you call the poker, but. It's a kind it, of a little shock thing. It's a yeah. cattle, cattle prod. If, cattle prod. If I could use that in our gym, I would. I, don't. <laughs> I think that's definitely going to get taken out of this episode. When our pastors back up, I'd love to be, I'd tell them, like, I'm going to go get my cattle prod. <laughs> I, then, then they wouldn't back up. Yep. I thought you want them to drop step. Yeah, but not back up. They back okay. pedal, you know, 10 feet backwards. There's, you know. I, Madden oh. was very concerned that that was hurting the cows. And I, I agree with her. Yeah. It, I don't like that. It's I'm sure it's a, very normal. It's the but. same as a shock collar for dogs that they train dogs oh, yeah. with. It's just, just, just a reminder. And then the other thing she was concerned about is uh, Junie, who you were rope is a friend of yours and roping with. He made a joke to Madden and said, "Hey, you you put the fence boards back on, and we're gonna go have a beer." So then she kept asking the whole ride home, "Well, where are they gonna go have a beer?" and and, you know, how, who's going to take care of the horses and the cows if they go have a beer? So, another toddler thoughts. Yeah. She, she was a cowgirl that day. She was, just, but still really concerned. She asks every day, how are the cows doing? Are they yeah. okay? Yeah. They're, Tra probably traumatized. They're fat She's going to be going to therapy for that in 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Now they're getting fat and happy right now. Uh, any lessons? Oh, Lauren... Uh, lessons, lessons, lessons. 
Um, Probably uh, one lesson that comes to mind is uh, uh, hearing our players talk about what's really important to them. Because uh, we, we kind of had a meeting to get everybody organized, who's working camps, all that stuff. And we just were asking them, because I wanted the, to bring the new players in. We talked talk to them about the chain we're building and those things. But really, really what things I hear that are most important to them is that one, it's, it's to make a great team, you really got to put the team first. And the way you put the team first is you be, be a great teammate. So uh, that's kind of our theme going into the summer is we're going to be team, a great team by becoming great teammates. And great teammates, it takes time and effort and build those relationships. And so I've got a really cool group that is really into that. And it makes a lot of fun and to see them how hard they want to work together and for each other. So that's my lesson of the day. I have one for you. Okay. If you can dream it, you can do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we do. You're always, you're always talking about dreaming big. Yeah. And I uh, just, I, yeah. I know you always have big plans up your sleeve. And I can't wait to see what the future holds for Nebraska volleyball. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I took a stop in Wyoming driving across there and, took a nap and dreamed, you know, for 15. <laughs> and now you're getting another horse that you probably don't need. But the real question is, everybody's asking me, what, what are we going to name him? Yeah. And, what? and oh. I'm going out of respect. The Cowboys call him 415. So you can't we're, name a horse we're gonna 415. Keep, we're going to keep it at 415. So we'll think but maybe if Madden comes up with a name, we'll, we'll maybe adjust. It, and he looks similar to, or he's a Palomino? Yeah, he's a Palomino. So similar to Bobby. Yeah. Or Bob's. Bob's, yeah. Bob's. <laughs> I like Bobby better. Yeah. That's, there's another Twitter poll we can do. What should we name 415? 15. Yeah, you got all you kinds know, of things. Let's go, Lauren. Hey, get, on, get on Twitter. Fire it up. I did see uh, Emily Eamon, wh when the news came out, she said, I think Coach Cook should name him Bucky. <laughs> <laughs> Why Bucky? I think because Wisconsin. I don't oh, okay. know. But Bucky the Badger, Bucky. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's what I was thinking when she posted it. But maybe she had a different meaning. But anyway, so so we need to do a, a poll for a horse name. What what were the other polls? But uh, DJ and Devani. Yeah. And there was one more. What was it? Those are the only two I can think okay. of. Okay. DJ and Devaney and horse name. I'll yeah. get those out. Maybe you should post it. Yeah. No, you do it. You're, they you love, have, they you love have... it when you ask questions. Okay. You yeah. have to repost it, though. Okay. Because you have more followers. Right. Send it to me. I'll repost. <laughs> well, thank you so much for tuning into this month's episode of Kicking Back with the Cooks. We appreciate your support. Coach Cook, thank you, as always, for your time. Russ Brown for producing this. Nick Burkhart for working on it. And we will see you again next month, July. We're... Well, gosh, three months out from playing, two months out? Uh, uh, you're, what I, saw, we're, I saw a few days ago it was 100 days. So okay. does that sound about right? Yeah. So, so we're, we're under 100 count, days. The countdown is on. And it feels like you just ended your last season. Yeah. But the other big news is uh, they're, they're redoing all the weight rooms. They're, they're sick. It's really cool. They're beautiful. Uh, updating the equipment. So that was the other, I got a tour last night. I still haven't been in the new facility training table and all that. Uh, in fact, you know, we're right next to it right now and they're still working on it. But um, so it's an exciting time to be at Nebraska. There's great, you know, the facilities, that part stuff is all getting new. And um, so uh, got the TerraFlex down today, both courts for camps. And so it's just starting to feel like, start feel it building. All right, well, on that note, new weight room, new contract, new horse. Oh. You're living your best life. Can you say, go Big Red? Go Big Red. Go Big Red. <laughs> and right. say, thanks, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. See you later. <laughs>